Backend and frontend developers are two of the most popular and most in demand software engineering roles, both paying well over $100,000 even for fresh graduates. There's only one other role that beats them in terms of popularity and demand, and that's a full stack developer, which is basically a combination of the two. In this video, I will answer some of the most frequently asked questions. What is the difference between a front end and a back end engineer? What are the day to day responsibilities? What do you spend most of your time working on? What are some of the most popular languages and frameworks used by each specialty? How to get a job in each role and how much those positions pay at junior, mid and senior level. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to choose which role fits you best. You also have enough information and resources to start working towards getting your first job in either specialty. Hello coders, I'm Caro, senior software engineer at Canva. And on this channel, I bring you my first hand experience working in the tech industry. Over the past 10 years, I had the chance to work in both of the roles we are talking about today, so I'm really excited to introduce them to you and see which one you choose, if any. Let's start with an overview of the backend and frontend engineer roles and look at some key differences between them. I think the easiest way to learn is to start with an example. One application I'm 100% confident all of you, my amazing viewers, know is YouTube. To build a YouTube website, you will need both frontend and backend engineers and many, many other technical and non-technical roles, but let's simplify it here. When you click on a video like this one, everything you can see on the page from the video player to the subscribe button, to the comment section, and even to the list of recommended videos on the site, all of that was built by front-end engineers. Front-enders are responsible for the visual interface between you, the user, and the functionality that the site offers. This part of web development is often called client side. Backenders, on the other hand, need to provide that functionality and the data that comes with it. It's often referred to as server side. So when you click on the link to my latest video, YouTube's backend pulls together all the information and data associated with it. The location of the video on YouTube servers, the title, description, and likes count, channel name, avatar, and subscribers count, list of comments and list of recommended videos. Then it provides that data to the front end, which then draws it in a human friendly way with components you can interact with. That process of taking the data and drawing it in the browser is called rendering. Now you are able to consume the rendered content, but what if you want to interact with it? For example, subscribe to my channel. Let's do an experiment. Find F12 on your keyboard and click it. That opens developer tools in your browser. Then navigate to the network tab. You'll be kind of able to spy on the conversations frontend and backend are having. If you now click subscribe, you will see that the frontend asked the backend to do it. The truth is, if it didn't, the next time you refresh YouTube, the frontend wouldn't have any way of remembering your choice to subscribe to my channel. To explain it more simply, frontend is like a template that is ready to display information and let you interact with it. Backend is what provides that information and when triggered, applies changes to it. Important thing to note here is that backend doesn't actually store the information itself. It only retrieves it, modifies it, and adds it to a database or another data storage solution. And depending on the nature of the data, the responsibility belongs to either data, database, or an infrastructure engineer. If you want me to cover any of those roles in the future, leave a comment below. Now that we understand the difference between a front-end and a back-end of an application, we can talk about the day-to-day -day responsibilities of a front-end and a back-end engineer. In both roles, you will spend most of your time writing code or reviewing code changes made by your teammates. Your time coding would usually be split between writing new features and fixing bugs and maintaining existing systems. As you become more senior, you will also spend more time designing new features and solutions. Not in the sense of how they look, but more how they work within the existing systems. Some things you will need to consider are how does the new feature impact current experience? What potential security threats can arise? What additional cost or cost saving will the new solution bring? As a front-end developer, you will work closely with product managers and designers, making sure that what you're building is what users actually need. You'll be provided with designs, sometimes interactive ones created in programs like Figma, so that you can better understand the flow of the new feature. For example, when you click on the subscribe button, the color fades from red to gray in 200 milliseconds and the label changes from subscribe 
to subscribed. You will sometimes create two versions of the same feature and configure it in a way that a group of users gets variant A and equally sized group will get variant B. Then a data analyst will check which of the versions performed better and you will be tasked with removing the other one. As a backend developer, you work with a project manager or a tech lead. Your focus will be on creating services that provide correct functionality to the front-end in a performant, reliable and secure way. You'll be provided with requirements instead of designs. For example, implement a get video details endpoint that takes a video ID and returns title, description and URL of that video. By the way, an endpoint is like a backend info line that the front-end can call. You might also be asked to modify an existing functionality. For example, given the get video details endpoint, also return the list of comments people left under that video. As an added financial bonus, you will often have an option of performing on-call duties. This means that during your rotation, you can be paged outside of your working hours, even issue arises and needs to be fixed immediately. Okay, so what specific technologies, languages and frameworks, also referred to as a tech stack, do front-end and back-end engineers use? Front-enders often start with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. HTML defines the layout, CSS describes the styling and JavaScript adds the interactive functionality. When you click on that subscribe button, it's actually a JavaScript function asking backend to do it. JavaScript is nowadays often replaced with TypeScript, which adds additional type safety, classes interface, and many other features. No one starts implementing frontend from scratch anymore, and some of the most popular frameworks are React, Vue.js, and Angular. Backenders have a wider choice of their primary programming languages. Some of the most popular ones are Java, Python, Ruby, and Go. Frameworks are often closely tied to the programming language, and here you can hear about Spring, Django, Ruby on Rails. Web servers are mostly a responsibility of infrastructure engineers, but many small companies don't have that dedicated role and instead have their backend engineers manage the servers. Here the choice is between serverless solutions like AWS, GCP or Azure, or traditional servers like Apache. Some backenders do maintain databases like MySQL or MongoDB. With all that you learned so far, you probably already have a good idea which of the roles you are more interested in pursuing. Before I tell you how much each of those jobs pay, I'll just give you a quick guidance on what to do if you want to maximize your chances on scoring a job. The best way to make your resume look good is to have a portfolio of 5 to 10 projects that you've built yourself. They don't have to be original. You can take your favorite app and just implement a simplified version of it. If you have an original idea or a problem that no other app solves and you just built one, that's even better. That's actually how I built my Android portfolio, which landed me jobs at Microsoft and Canva. Once you have an app idea, go back to the section of this video where I talk about tech stacks and pick something to start with. If you're building front-end, you can just use fake data stored in a text file, or even better, use a public API to populate your app. If you're only building back-end, you can either create a very simple front-end to show the results returned by your endpoints, or you can just use the default terminal on your computer. If you're not sure where to start, which specialty to go into, or you just want to try both, try this simple prototyping tech stack to build both front-end and back-end. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and Express.js. Now, the salaries you can get as a junior software engineer don't vary much between a front-end and a back-end developer. Frontender salaries in the US start at around $100,000 and backenders are just 10% more. The difference usually flattens with seniority where mids can expect anything from $120,000 to $170,000 and seniors anything up to $250,000. This is just the base salary though, that doesn't include any sign up or performance bonuses, equity or other perks. Those can double or even triple your salary. There's one thing I didn't show you in this video yet, and this is how my day as a front-end engineer looks like. If you wanna see how I spend my days at work, check out this video. <laughs>